I'll have you, if you will, to open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I want to look at the passages of Scripture that we attempted to look at Sunday night and kind of deal with that subject just a little bit tonight as we look at the order of sanctification and a sanctified life, as we look at being regenerated, which is simply the theological term for being born again or saved, uh, justified, which is that blessing that we receive out of salvation, and then sanctification. And I will. this is just scratching the surface tonight um, uh, on the subject of sanctification, and we want to look at that. I want you not, you don't have to turn to Romans chapter 8, turn to... 1 Corinthians chapter 6. While you're turning there, let me just go ahead and remind you of Romans chapter 8. And that is, he says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. That is the goal that we are after when we become a child of, of the King, is to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That I'm to look like him, I'm to act like him, I'm to be like him. So that's, what, that, that's the goal, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, more for whom he did predestinate, them he did call, and whom he called, he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. And that is the ultimate goal of the Christian believer, is to be glorified when that glorious day comes. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. Amen. And then we are glorified. I, I was describing to uh, Brother Rice about how we were coming in yesterday and how when we got right to the last leg of the journey and we were worn out and tired driving eight, uh, driving about five and a half to six hours coming from South Carolina and here we are the last leg of the journey we had been already on the road and, uh, and everything and then we get to Moorhead and they have the road blocked and so we have to go around to 101 to get, get home. I told Brother Rice it was almost as if you, you had lived your life for God and you got up to the gate and they said, wait a little bit longer. That's, that, that's how it would feel. But how many of you understand that that's not going to happen, thank God? That, that when we get up into heaven and we're ready and we're prepared, and the, 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 the justified believer, the saved believer is glorified. He's transformed completely then into the image of Christ Jesus. Here's the passage that I want us to look at tonight. And that it simply says, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall, and, and, and etc., 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 shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. So I want to talk about these three things real quickly tonight, if I can, talking about being regenerated and justified and sanctification. Again, the definition and a good definition is the further and full preparation of the regenerated and justified soul for living the Christian life in this world. Let me simplify it. Sanctification is what it takes for the saved believer, the believer that is born again and saved in Jesus Christ. Sanctification is the thing you need to live your Christian life in this filthy world. Amen. That is exactly what you need. You need some help in this life. How many of you know this life is messed up? This world is messed up. This world out there that we live in, they don't care about you. The devil doesn't care about you. All they want to do is destroy you and pull you down. You need the power of sanctification. And I think if we would look at it as power, if we would look at the sanctification as power for Christian living instead of just the doctrine or just something that are a bunch of rules and regulations, but we would look at sanctification as the power for Christian living, I think we'd get a whole lot more excited about the sanctified life. Because it's an exciting life, amen? That it's a sanctified, that, that N.J. Holmes says, that it's a further and full preparation for living the Christian life in this world. It is regeneration, awesome definition of regeneration. It is the act of God giving life to a dead soul. 
I am so tired of people that want to consider sin as some kind of sickness or as some kind of disease or as something that you need band-aid over and we can just, if we live a little bit better or if we get a little bit more good moral deeds, then we'll be all right. That is not the essence of, sanctif- uh, of salvation. In salvation as a sinner, you are dead in sins and in trespasses. You are ultimately desperately hopelessly dead as Lazarus was dead in the tomb that's the way you were as a sinner you were dead you weren't just sick you weren't just sick unto death you were dead Dead in your sin. That's what Ephesians says. We were dead in sins and in trespasses. But in the new birth, and this is why they call it a new birth, in salvation, God gives life to a dead soul. The same way Christ walked up to a man who had been dead for four days. They thought he was dead, and he was dead. And here they are, they're mourning him. But when he says, Lazarus, come forth then the supernatural power of God oh come on the supernatural power of God breathe life into that dead man and the man began to move and he came out of the tomb and the grave alive you were dead in trespasses and sin but Paul says you are quickened you are made alive by the spirit of the living God You are made alive. How are you made alive? Here's the process. Number one, you heard the gospel of your salvation. Whether it was you read it for yourself, whether it was a preacher preaching the gospel, whether it was you heard it on television, or maybe you remember your grandma or your mama saying it, but you heard the gospel of your salvation. For faith cometh by and hearing by the word of God. So you heard the gospel of your salvation. Conviction began to set into your life and you were convicted of yourself as a sinner and you're convicted of your need for Jesus Christ as a savior and you would think to yourself if I can put it in somewhat of a Herkazan terminology, boys I'm going to scrape. I'm messed up. I'm I'm in sin. I'm 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 down and in, in dirty in sin. I need some help to get out of this thing. And as Paul would say, "Oh wretched man, who shall deliver me from the body of this death?" Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. There's a conviction that takes place that everybody was feels as they are a sinner and they are miserable. You're guilty. You're miserable. You feel that guilt upon you, and you are crying out constantly, what do I do? How in the world, as that old uh, commercial says, how in the world do you spell relief? Can I tell you, it's not in any kind of thing in the world. Can I tell you how you spell relief? J-E-S-U-S. That's how you spell relief tonight, is in Jesus Christ, who is the Savior and the Lord. Then here is a thing that most people miss these days. You repent. You repent. Repentance is simply this. You turn your back on sin and the world and you turn your face toward Christ Jesus our Lord. It is not just crying. I've seen a many one that's cried, gone gone, gone to an altar and cried but never repented. You have too. You've lived longer than I have. So you've seen a many, many one that has come down to the altar and they've cried, but they've never repented. But the repentance is I'm turning my back on sin and I'm turning my face toward Jesus Christ. I am turning from my sin. I repent of my sin. And when that happens, then bless God, you are born again. The new birth takes place. You're a new creature in Christ. All the old things are passed away and And bless God, he makes all things new to the glory of God. Amen. That's that's salvation. In a nutshell, that's salvation right there. You heard the gospel. You were convicted. You repent of your sin. And then you're born again. Amen. You stick anything else in, in the middle of that. You, you try to stick theology or doctrine or this or that or whatever, whether we're Trinitarian or whatever, in the midst of that, it, it messes up the gospel. 
The basics of the gospel is that you hear the gospel message, you are convicted, you repent, and you're born again. But regeneration is not reformation. 